Hello and welcome. I hope you're safe and well. Today's exciting episode is me doing more beading. And um, yeah, but I also talk about the So Frugal 2024 sewing challenge. Basically, you have to use a free pattern and fabric from your stash. So it's about sewing without spending money. I mean, literally every, every sewer that I know has thousands of dollars worth of fabric in this stash. But okay, we'll do a so frugal challenge. Anyway. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. Yeah, I was going to make something new for the So Frugal Challenge, but I realized I've just like done all those jackets and I finally finished the hand sewing on them all. Still have that wine colored floral jacket to do go. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd put these up here because they these three look so pretty together. And I still haven't done the lining for the that bright floral jacket with the um, strawberries on it. And I wanted to get out the Kandinsky one because I just love it so much. And um, see this section here with the sort of um, magentas and the teal and the green. I love, well, I love all the beading on this. Yeah, look. I'm getting distracted yet again. I feel like I should click my fingers or wave my hand in front of my face. Yeah, so this section here with the pinks and the teals and the greens. Well, what I was thinking, because I only used um, about half the fabric for this one here. So I've still got the other half of the fabric and I have some beads left, seed beads left over. So I thought with the other half of the fabric, what I'll do is make a Chanel style jacket and have a couple of layers of the netting, the structural layers underneath. And I'll use these sort of magenta -y, um wine colored ones. They sort of match the deeper, darker colors in there. And I'll sort of make a Chanel style jacket, but out of a floral. I think that would be interesting. And then do the Kandinsky style, you know, drip beads in between the big beads. I don't know. I just, I love the fabric and I love those beads. So I thought I'd do something together with those. But then I remembered that I still have the uh, vintage, the vintage sweater. It's a Chanel style ja a tweed jacket but it looks like a vintage sweater. So I still have that. So I'm going to finish that first before I start anything new. So it's green and pink. So I've got the beads out and I'm slowly, slowly doing the sleeves. And I finished the, um, the bit on the front that I hadn't done. So now I'm adding the tiny little musk pink seed beads to the sleeves. So while I do this, I've got another bit that's about um, free sewing patterns and where you can download them. So I'll let you watch that and then we'll come back and talk about this awesome jacket some more. So there are just two rules. Can't pay for a pattern and can't um, pay for your fabric. So you have to get a downloadable free PDF. I mean, so anyway, we're going to mood fabrics and just click on the menu, drop down to sewing patterns. It used to have a little sew side thing at the top, but now you have to click on sewing patterns. They're free. Basically, I think they... Um, and if an influencer designs their own pattern, they reach out to them and it's like mutual exposure to sort of thing. Anyway, there's loads of categories and um, you just click on the category and they all come up. Suiting section has nice jackets. The costume section has, I think they must be cosplays from like TV shows or video games or something, but they're nice coats. They're all sort of different ones. Anyway, we will go to the dresses. And of course, the one I like is the plainest one, but we'll skip down to another one and we'll click on that and I'll just show you what it looks like. So yeah, of course, I like the plainest ones. And I like that robe thing on the right as well. But we'll just keep going down. Oh, shirt dress on the right, upper right here. We'll click on that one because it's cute. And again, I, I don't know if it's from like a cosplay or something. Anyway, so um, when you click on it, it just shows you what you've been shopping. So yeah, of course, I've been looking at tweeds. What do you expect from me? Now on the right is what you'll need for this particular project. Obviously, if you're doing the challenge, then you have to use stuff from your stash. But it gives you a good idea. Then it says the pattern and then you have to enter your email to get the free pattern sent to you. I mean, 
if you've ever bought anything from Moob Fabrics, you're already on their mailing list anyway. Then there's a chart for what size you are. And it's really inclusive. So from double zero, which is a size four, to um, like big um, uh, large sizes, like really quite, it's a really good size range. And then it's got like just maybe 10 or a dozen photographs of the steps. And then some, most of the time there's pictures at the bottom of the person of the influencer wearing them. So, yeah, I, it's really simple and it doesn't give you a lot of information about each step. But they're pretty basic patterns and straightforward. So, yeah, if you've got the time to print everything and stick it all together and you like you like downloadable PDFs, then I think there's some really cute things here. And they're sort of trendy things as well, rather than classics, which is, um, or basics, which is what you see a lot of the time. Of course, it's an Easter holiday, so Mood has every holiday. Um, Mood, I'm not sponsored, but every holiday Mood has a sale. So Easter Bonnet Parade in New York City is where you wear a pastel Easter Bonnet. So yeah, pastel's 20% off and like St. Patrick's Day, it's green is 20% off, that sort of thing. So that was happening in March. And if you want to see what people have made in March for So Frugal, look at hashtag so frugal 24 on instagram and or on youtube yorkshire sewing girl so it's a uk thing i think well i think some of the prizes are international like um the downloadable f uh, patterns from patent companies and some of the uh, vouchers for fabric if you win those they will send them um international but yeah there's lots of different prizes and loads of people enter it and yeah, seems really nice, uh, really cool. But I would, if I didn't have enough money to um, buy any sewing patterns, I would go to a thrift store and just buy some from there. Like, and yeah, because whenever I get sick of all the sewing patterns I have, I just donate them and I always trace my patterns. So the entire complete pattern, all the pieces are always in the ones that I donate. And I think that's I'm sure there's a few dodgy people, but mostly I think if you go to a thrift store or a um, secondhand store, then yeah, it's a good place to get some patterns and you can just modify them. Like this jacket here looks kind of nothing like the original one. And yeah, I really like it. So even if all the cheap patterns at the thrift stores look a bit outdated, just buy it and sort of look at the bones of it rather than the way it's been styled on the illustration on the front and you can usually sort of you know streamline it a bit or take out a flounce here or there and alter it and it's yeah like I do it all the time I just have one jacket pattern and make like a dozen different versions of it that they're all slightly tweaked and yeah I find it I like having <laughs> loads of things that are basically all the same maybe it's just me anyway that would be my hack if you didn't have enough money to um buy loads of patterns now i am going to go do some more beading on that vintage sweater chanel style jacket and yeah this is what i've done on it so far i'll show you that and then i'll come back at the end so back in december i made this tweed jacket but it i made it because i bought this tweed because it looks like a vintage knit so if you want to see the actual video where I made that I'll put a card up the top and yeah it's just a standard way that I make a, a Chanel star tweed jacket anyway made that in December here it is it's absolutely gorgeous and now I'm starting to beat it so I think in the last video I, I, I'll put a link up to the last video I decided that I was going to just do it really classic really vintage small beads and um, yeah so I did a lot of the sort of beigey champagne ones and green ones and then I was like oh maybe I'll add magenta ones maybe I won't so um, but first I'll finish the be um, the beige and the green ones well I have worked more on the green ones and the beige ones because there's just so much to put in here 
So yeah, as you can see, I've just been gradually filling in the lines. So there's primary lines in the beige and the green, but also secondary ones in the green. So that's what I was working on. And then I was like, hmm, well, it was a little bit boring, <laughs> but I did more on the cuffs as well. So I've got three lines of cream, but I also put, um, I felt like there was still a bit too much white or oatmeal color that you could see. So I decided to add secondary lines to these as well. So not just green secondary lines, secondary lines in um, for the oatmeal bit. So I was like, well, I guess I'll put these, they're sort of a blush pink, transparent, but depending on the color thread you use, they can look sort of very beige champagne or if you use a pink thread, they can look a little bit more um, blush pink. Like if you see a handful of them, they look blush pink. Um, so that was the idea behind maybe using pink. This is the, using the standard beige uh, cotton uh, thread that I was using. And I do like the look. Um, when you move it, you can sort of see how they shine. So it just adds texture and depth and it just makes it look less vacant because I'll show you the other sleeve in a second. But it really, when you compare and contrast the two, you can see how these ones look a lot emptier. So that was the idea behind filling them. But then, um, yeah, so obviously I'd done three on this side, so I had to go and do three clear glass ones on that side. Well, they're a, they're a pink blush, but they basically look like clear glass when you um, see them just isolated in one tiny bead like that. So I went ahead and I, <laughs> I'm not sure why we need so much footage, but yeah, I did that. And I was like, actually... Um, I was thinking about the whole of the jacket and what I love about those vintage knit jackets is that they have like one line of this, one line of that. So I was like, should I do the same on this section here or should I maybe change it up in some way? And of course, this has the magenta in it and I pulled some magenta beads as well as some, there was sort of more pub bubblegum pink than magenta. Sort of, I guess I was inspired by the structural layer, the lining on the inside of the jacket, which you can sort of see carefully folded back there. So I went ahead and did both cuffs and I do love it in the classic way where there's only two sort of colours of beads. I do think like if I made three jackets of this, one of them would definitely just be green and um, sort of beige hued beads. But I felt because I only made one base jacket of this, I have to decide what I'm going to do with the whole thing. I decided I'm going to add some of that bubblegum sort of pink colour to it because I don't know, I just you get bored when you're doing beads and I had them. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to see what this looks like. So here we go. So obviously, because I did the clear ones on the cuff, I'm going to have to do some in the clear just to tie in the pattern. But so yeah, I'm going to have two with the bubble gum, one clear, two bubble gum, one clear, that sort of thing. There's a, yeah, sort of you could pretty self-explanatory there so um and here we can contrast it with the side that I haven't done yet um done any of the secondary lines with so as I said they're very very small beads they're four millimeter or number six and um, which means you can fit six in an inch if you're non-metric so yeah um they're, they're very tiny and it takes so long to do this work but Oh my gosh, the finished product is amazing. It's just, I I love this jacket so much. I think when you work on a jacket, you do get very invested in it, but I still just like it for the sake. It's just got so much detail. I think if you walked past it, like often people ask me, like when you're wearing these jackets, do people just stop and stare? No, they, they really don't. Hardly anyone ever notices that I'm wearing any sort of, you know, anything that's um, got a lot of handwork or craftsmanship in it. They just don't notice. Like if you're wearing something fast fashion that are uh, Instagram model recently wore, then people notice that, but they're just not looking out for it. So no, it's not a problem ever wearing something that you made in my experience. But um, yeah, so I love it. And I'm going to 
keep going and do the whole of the other side. And I still haven't done the back or the sleeves yet, obviously. So there's a lot more work, but I am loving this. And I've recently found a few new podcasts about the current conflict and, you know, the underlying causes and things like that. So, yes, definitely got a lot to listen to and think about while I do all this work. So I will be back once I've done a little bit more. Okay, here we go. So I've done, um, obviously, I tur- once I'd done the bottom ones, I turned up the hem and I hand stitched that down just to protect the ends of the jacket. And I also did the same with the cuffs. So I've done the front and the left mostly. And then I started working on the back as well, just because I happened to have the pink threads out. I think earlier on I said I used cotton thread. That's wrong. I try and use fa- um, fabrics wise. I try and use all natural fabrics all the time. But with thread, it's actually stronger if you use polyester that rather than cotton or silk. So yeah, I always use poly thread. And just because it lasts like literally decades longer. So if you want a piece that you could, you know, potentially sell to a museum or donate to a museum, then, or you just want something that's going to last decades, then you're better off using poly thread just because it's stronger and it lasts longer. So here we go, just having a look at what it looks like. So as you can see, I've done a little bit of the, depending on how long, I had left in my thread I did start to do the bits around the sleeves as well but you have to hold sort of have to turn the whole jacket around and hold it upside down to do inside the the top inside of the like the sleeve parts uh, the shoulder parts of the sleeves so I generally just did the front like the torso sections and then um, yeah I'm going to do the sleeves in it at a different time when I have more patience basically and when I have a better idea of what it's going to look like. So I think on the cuffs I actually did um, a tiny glass bead between each of the bigger beads too but I decided I didn't really like the look. It wasn't worth the investment of times. So I think a time I think with the secondary line of beads you can really see that and it's worth doing but dotting a little bead in between the primary lines I personally feel like it looks better without it, but each their own. So that is why I did that. And now I'm starting to work on the back. Again, I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up. As you can see, there's less and less done on the top, just because I don't have, you know, an endless amount of time. I just sort of, I'm trying to do a little bit of a time, a little bit at a time and gradually make my way through the whole thing. I'm getting there eventually. And I also sort of just work on the bits that I want to see. Like, so obviously this big slab at the bottom, you can see what the entire design is going to look like just because I've done this bit. So yeah, I thought, felt it was important. So yeah, I'm getting there. I mean, there's obviously still some sections of green at the top on the right side of the jackets, but left side of the screen that I haven't finished yet. And it's just a matter of which beads I've got um near me at the moment like I'll have to get out all the green ones again if I want to do the finish those two green rows and I just felt like it's (laughs) I've got enough chaos going on at the moment I'll just have the seed beads like the little beads at the moment so now I have to go do the other videos because February is Valentine's Day month so rom-coms so I'll do that and then when I have time I'll work on this some more So I did the movie reaction video for 13 Going On 30 where I watch the movie and I react to it but I also like try to find things to um, fashion and sewing inspiration and I did that and yeah I don't think I'll try another one next month and I feel like I'm not quite getting there but I don't know. I enjoyed it. Anyway, so um, I did a little bit more work, as you can see. Oh, well, maybe you can't. But then, uh, um, and then my next video. <laughs> so yeah, just, it's very boring. Like I added a few more seed beads. So the next video is making a handbag because there's loads of handbags in the movie, 13 going on 30. So I'm just sort of thinking about the different styles and I think I've got three different types that I'm going to try and the first is sort of 
what I hope will be the simplest and then I'll sort of go second a little bit more difficult and third you know more complex but the idea is to do a, a really simple oh this is me saying I have to do the um, so I did a little bit more work on the back and you can see those pink ones and I filled in a few more lines but at this point I can't use any more big um those sort of cream and oatmeal colored beads I can't use any more of those on the back until I do the sleeves because I need to use the ones on the sleeves this is all I've got left of the jade um with the glass but they look jade of those beads so I need to do the three lines on the front left to do plus the sleeves and then once I've done all those then if there's any left over <laughs> I can use them on the back otherwise I'm going to have to get these other round bone colored beads and use them instead of those oval sort of faceted ones that I really like but I just don't think I've got enough to do the whole of the back so yeah I'm gonna have to do the sleeves and the sleeves are really finicky like there's just no room like you can only put one hand inside and the other outside and you've got to yeah, it's just an absolute juggle and I've sort of strained my wrist from doing too much hand sewing so I, I should really stop and and not sew anything for a day or two or however long but um yeah we shall see so oh and I put some green ones on there but um yeah then I had to stop and make my first handbag. So this is my mock-up in cotton and it's the lining is also cotton. And then I made another one out of tweed and it's got beads on there as well. And I used a bulky tweed, like a coating tweed rather than, because uh, I figured if I could make it out of that, then I could make it out of any of my tweeds. So it was a bit difficult just because it's so tiny yet so bulky. But I really like it. Next up, I'm going to do one that's just all beaded, which will be quite the challenge because it's such a tiny bag. Sewing the two sides together is, I think I'm just going to have to hand sew, sew them together. Anyway, back to this jacket. So I've, as you can see, I've used some of the see-through green ones um, on one of the rows. So yeah, I'm trying to cut down the amount of jade I use on here so there'll be enough for the, yeah. So I've got the three rows on the front of the torso to do. So you can see I've put a sequin in each of those. And then the sleeves. And once that's done, I'll be able to finish the back. And of course, I have the under sleeves to go as well. I don't know. This is a really complicated jacket. Anyway, it won't get done unless I keep chipping away at it. So I will go and do that. Aw, oh, bless. I mean, I do get a lot done, but I still haven't finished it. So then I did the pink, the the Barbie doll jacket the with pink flowers all over it. And once the flowers were done, I decided to put seed beads dripping out of everything so it looked like an overgrown garden and once that was done I decided to do the Kandinsky jacket which I showed you at the start of this video so now you're up to speed so yeah more of the same I've just been adding more it's just a really slow process so I've tied little pink bits of thread on the sections where the pink will go because um yeah as I said there's different lines have different patterns in them and yeah, I guess originally those ugly sweaters or the vintage sweaters with the patterns in them were created because people only had, you know, X amount of pink, X amount of green and loads of, you know, oatmeal colour and they just wanted to use them up. So they created all these patterns. And I'm kind of in the same situation because I've got a limited amount of beads. I mean, I could buy more. But yeah, I kind of just want to use up what I have. So this is me deciding that I want to move the stuff off the sideboard so I can show you. But I just put this um, cropped bolero style jacket on the um, mannequins. It's actually my size rather than the other two. So you can see what it looks like um, properly. So it's just a little more cropped, I guess. And it, I, I think it fits better. And yeah, it's just, I love that fabric. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I can't wait to make an actual Chanel style jacket. But I do think this one hangs beautifully. Like just the shape of the jacket is really beautiful. I think I might do the back of the top, like 
the neckline a little lower next time just because I don't like things against my neck but yeah it's it's just I love this I love this fabric it's so beautiful and I think these three look absolutely gorgeous together and because they've got similar colors in them I think it's the green and the reds and so beautiful anyway I'm really going to take it off the mannequin now and I'm going to actually put it on another mannequin that has a black dress on it but now let's focus on the vintage knit one so there it is on the jacket on the on the dress I think it looks cute that's probably how I'd wear it or either just a plain black t-shirt more a navy t-shirt and jeans so here it is as you can see I finally finished those three lines on the front there's still a little bit right at the top of the jacket like it's kind of on the back as well and yeah both sleeves I mean I'm slowly getting there you can see that I've done so yeah the ones that are clear are going to have clear glass beads on them obviously and yeah it's very pretty so I've got more beads so I will keep doing this and that's it for this video thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed I hope you've been inspired to um yeah i I don't actually use PDF patterns, but any, everyone who uses those ones on Mood um, says they're great and they love the outfits they made. And I mean, they're ones that actual sewers created to make for themselves, so they fit real bodies, so I think that's good. Anyway, I, I've i just got so much beading to do. <laughs> but I will, yeah, I'm determined. I just love this jacket. It's going to be so beautiful once it's finished. I have to keep telling myself that. So thanks again for watching and um, yeah, I hope you have a happy and safe long weekend. Lots of sewing if that's... Ooh, and chocolate. Can you believe I do not have any chocolate in my house? Ugh, what is wrong with me? Anyway, oh, I love this fabric. Yeah, because I haven't said that enough. And I think we will end with one last longing gaze at the Kandinsky jacket. I'm so going to make more of these jackets. I've got like three or four different um, furnishing velvet. So this is a home decorating fabric. It's much denser than a tweed. I don't think a tweed would carry beads anywhere near as well as these dense, like f robust furnishing fabrics do. So yes, there's going to be more of those Kandinsky style jackets in my future. Anyway, happy sewing.